today I want to talk about the three minute game a little bit more and um, give you a little bit of an overview about the three minute game and what the roots and the core of that is. So um, I guess everybody knows by now what the three minute game is, right? <laughs> okay, so is there anybody who has not played the three minute game at all with, with anybody in your life? Not played the three minute game? Okay, so everybody has, okay, so you have not, not played it, okay. Um, so there is a, there's an interesting thing between knowing the three minute game and playing the three minute game. So by knowing the three minute game, it's a cognitive, rational, mental process. I'm super good in cognitive, rational, mental processes. I can be really incredibly intelligent and figure it all out and create structures out of that. <laughs> and that's good, you know, sometimes we need a cognitive, mental, rational process to create a structure in our head to um, put physical, neurological, emotional experience in it so that we can make a, a picture out of the entire thing. Um, but it's a little bit like um, some of you have me heard saying this uh, comparisons. It's like when you go in a restaurant and you just get a menu and you just like you know, your mouth is getting kind of moistured and you just see all the nice kind of oh my god it's this and this is so well described how it works and you know you just need to eat you will not get saturated by reading a menu so that's the same with the knowing the three minute game and playing the three minute game because the roots of the three minute game the deepest core of that is is one specific dynamic and that's the dynamic of what we just have done with the object. So you, you start, you feel. And when you start to feel with your own skin, you might come in connection with some feelings. Sometimes we come in connection with some core beliefs that, um, that this is not okay to do that, to feeling other people when we reach out and using our capacity of our skin to be capable of feeling ourselves and others. So some of the feelings that can come up are sensations of shame, fear, guilt, embarrassment, inadequacy, shyness, we want to hide. And this is just the nature of our feeling senses and I want to give that as a question to you that you have connection to that you can feel yourself on an object and you see there coming emotions up I mean right now around lockdown and corona there's not much opportunity but I imagine you all have some experiences how it feels when you use your skin you move your impulses of action towards the felt skinly central sense of feeling yourself yeah so what makes it difficult for you to feel yourself on somebody else what's your obstacle what's your difficulty and there's no right or wrong here it's just you are an expert of your experience what makes it difficult So the important piece to understand is that this, what we just do with the object has literally in the roots and the core, nothing to do with a three minute game. What it has to do with is, and that's why I emphasize it so much in exercises and whatever I do in our base and our root uh, neurological functioning that we can do that and we have all this capability of so from early age on so it's an it's an 
<clears throat> built-in mechanism for infants to making connection with the world and making connection with the caretaker, with the mother and feeling and it's bonding, oxytocin release and creating, you know, synapses that are firing up our, our um, uh, nervous system, different parts of the brain, how to engage and co-regulate and self-regulate. You know, it's a big thing behind this structure, being capable of using your impulses and feeling towards your own joy, your own pleasure. So this is, is not a specific thing that belongs to the three minute game. And it's a vital piece of the functioning of using the three minute game. And it's a, it's a really important piece because this is where the development of connection literally is happening. So playing the three minute game is, is, a, is a specific concept. So it got developed by Harry Fedders. And Harry Fedders is, uh, he's now in his kind of mid 70s or something. He is from the body school of electric. And he invented that about 20 years or so ago. So he is a, um, a recovering alcoholic. And he has been in the 12 step program. <clears throat> and he <clears throat> he's mainly educating gay men in a center upstate New York where gay men coming <clears throat> in the um, uh, coming out and just like being in their sexual energy. So he was teaching um, ages ago on the body school of electric in San Francisco, California, a workshop on power, surrender and intimacy. So where a handful of practitioner and people came to explore and, <clears throat> and the person who was originally teaching this class got kind of ill. So Harry Fettis just jumped in and he did not know how to fill this up with the ideas of the person before. So he had to come up with something else on this theme. So he created on power surrender and intimacy the idea that he wanted to create a structure that every participant has the same share on time to receive something. And so the, the, the roots and the core of his um, um, creation of the three minute game is that came from um, first part from the um, anonymous, anonymous alcoholics from the second step, what is you have to give your power away to a greater power than yourself to save your sanity. Because you have to admit, or we all have to admit in the terms of being addicts that we don't have power ourselves. So we have given our power to a substance that we cannot control. So this substance has control over us. So we need to give our power to a higher power that can take this addiction away from us that we are in alignment and truth with ourselves. And then he was um, as well, he has a deep spiritual background and came from the Rumi poem, you must ask for what you really want, don't go back to sleep. So it's a longer poem in there. Um, and it's, it's quite some story around that. It's really interesting if you just want to look that up, um, that we have to come into this core of our soul. We have to ask for what we really want. And that's, that cannot come from the outside. It has to come from the inside. It's an internal, it's an internal job. So um, he brought this stuff together and then he said as well, you know, there are between people when we engage with each other, you are now here and when you have your beloved around or family or friends, there's always people can do with each other. There's always something we can do with each other. Always, <laughs> like just my Tanya. There is always we can do with each other. So he brought these structures into this workshop. And one of the participants was Betty Martin. And the um, idea of the three minute game was that people start playing. And the 
core of the three minute game is literally it, that there are two offers in there. The first offer is, sorry, the first offer is what do you want to do to me for three minutes? What do you want to do to me for three minutes? It's a pretty broad question. <clears throat> and I imagine people come up with all kinds of ideas and thoughts. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> what I do, what I want to do to you. So it has the, the roots of power in there. What do you want to do to me? So that I can give my power to you, where you give your gift of power not to misuse me, where you give your gift of power for me to surrender to you as a higher power for my transformation so that there is an that there is a place of love and care in between and that's an important piece of love and care so the first question was what do you want to do to me the second question is what do you want me to do for you and that can be literally anything Specifically, when it comes to power and surrender and intimacy, it opens up that question, um, you know, being dominant and being dominant in giving directions. How much of your power do you own when you give directions? Are you using and misusing people or are you coming from a place as well of you're expressing your own needs and you take in consideration that there is a hu other human being on the other end. So it's a deep stuff, you know, it's just, and so the important piece is when, when people play the three minute game, it has to be established between the two playing people. So there are two different dynamics in the three minute game one of them, are you playing it intimately with a beloved one? Where you're coming from an equal state where you have the same rights? Or are you coming from a professional place where you are a facilitator or a practitioner where you wanna initiate people into a place of letting them find receiving? A complete two different things here. So mainly when I ask people to play the three minute game, I ask people to play it from this place of intimacy with, with a friend, with a, with a play buddy, with a, with a lover, with a, somebody just, just, you know, you can play it with a family member or just with a friend. You don't have to be sexual or intimate partner with anybody to play the three minute game. You can play that with a stranger if you want to, as long as you have this agreement that you play and then you know, alternating for three minutes, it's your turn that you do what you want. And for three minutes, it's my turn that I do what I want. And then for three minutes, you do what I want. And then for three minutes, I do what you want. That's pretty much it. And you will find different things when you play it this in the what do you want to do to me and what do you want me to do for you dynamics. So what Betty Martin did, she took the three minute game and start playing it with um, clients from a practitioner perspective. And she um, figured out that this broad um, a question of the offer, what do you want to do to me and what do you want me to do to you um, that most people could not relate to that. So she narrowed it down to touch as she was as well a touch professional. So she will start playing the three minute game related to touch. How do you want to touch me? And how do you want me to touch you for three minutes? Uh, it's a different question than doing. So specifically by the question, how do you want to touch me for three minutes? That most people had no idea when it came to their action for themselves that this core is that they have to be capable of feeling themselves. And most people can't. They can't that either in 
sensual engagement with on an intimate level without playing the three minute game. And they could not do that within the three minute game that they could not relate with this idea. So, and this is how the um, feeling of the exercise came into the three minute game. So that we can make with the, with the core, with the roots of our neurological sensory inflow, fill up this question, how do you want to touch me? Oh, I would like to feel your face. May I? The idea of the three minute game in the, in the raw form is um, that people have an equal share. But as soon as you just bring that into a professional setup, um, you have to come from a different space or from a different place. And this different place, this is what I would call a, a meta position. You just go on a meta dynamic where you have to be above, the, not above from a hierarchy or you're better. Above means like consciously your awareness, you have to go a level higher than the other person who comes to your session because you are in a position of power. And your job in a position of power is to give your power to your clients, to give your power to your um, participants, because your job is you are there for them. And your responsibility is to take care of this position of power from a deep core of embodied responsibilities. So there are other dynamics in there that are really important to know as a practitioner that there are two different distinctions between making a treatment when it comes to hands-on. So when you give a treatment in a classical way, like a massage, it's a one-way touch where you touch, you're doing something for the other person where you have to know what the other person wants and how they want that. So there's a really great structure, the embodiment massage um, that I teach. But when you just come from the other place of not only a treatment from the place of um, uh, a co-creative um, dynamic between the client and the practitioner, then you have to be capable of feeling yourself on the client to show them. And you have to welcome the client touching you that they can learn and find this dynamic within themselves. So you have to opening up to two way touch dynamics. So when you touch another person, a client or a, or a practitioner, and you touch them for yourself in the way of, hey, may I feel you? You have to be in really impeccable integrity that you not misuse your position of power as a complete different pair of shoes than playing it intimately with a, with a friend or with a play buddy. So therefore, the position of power, this is what I call in the system that you just see in behind there is this middle spot there, just right there in the middle of it. And that's one second I've seen you. That's the apex. And the apex is literally the, the, the meta position of being capable of holding the frame of power when you engage in a two-way touch dynamic professionally. So when I'm in this position here right now, so I'm holding that space here, I'm, I'm talking, I have to come from this meta position. It's more subtle, but I have to be in this meta position. It's differently as if we would snip right now, click. Hey, how is it going? So anybody has any idea what we want to do today and, you know? I'm like you and I don't know what we're doing. So it would switch immediately the dynamics. So therefore I have to, I have to be attentive to my position and I have to be capable of relating from that position from a place of love and care and embodying it for you as much as I can. Yeah, the misuse of power is when, I, when I'm in a session and I have an attraction to a client and I can't wait to get my hand on the client's body because I have the, the, I have the possibilities to that. And I direct the three minute game 
that I just finally can do what I want to do. So I would leave my position of power instead of being attentive for the highest intention for the client's purpose. I would start using it for my own benefit to feel something that would not in my uh, range. That would, that would be a misuse of power First. by my own needs in sessions with somebody. You know, the, the interesting thing is being aware of um, what's the position, what's the dynamic we're in here. So when you want to play the three minute game with a, with, with, with a, with a buddy, with a, with a lover or with a friend or anybody else, you, you're not a facilitator, you're not a teacher, you're not a, you're, 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 you're not a practitioner of any kind. And the challenge is to put your practitioner hat, coat, <laughs> face, mask aside and just be a human being, be vulnerable, um, be afraid, be sad, be curious, be shy, be um, have, you know, have shame when stuff happens and be honest with what is in the moment. And as a practitioner, as a facilitator, this is an, um, a never ending job to diving and digging deeper into our own core and you know, stuff will come up. We have all wounds. We have all kind of traumatic experience as kids. We come in connection with our grief and with our you know, unhealed stuff, even if we have decades of therapy behind us. You know, stuff will pop up. It's just how life is. So this is where we grow. And as a practitioner, as a facilitator, that will never end. And so we, we, I, I play the three minute game whenever I can. And I've always find something new in myself where I'm not a practitioner, where I'm not a facilitator. But then when I'm going into like a space like here, or I just teach a workshop or I have a client or um, I'm on a training like we were in, in, in Greece, Igor, um, uh, it's my job. It's my job. <laughs> I have to put myself aside. I mean, my humanness, of course, I'm still a human, but I have to put my processing aside and I have to be there for, for, for you, for people to find what they want to find. So the three minute game, if you want to play the three minute game, the first introduction is, Hey, there is this game it calls a three minute game. Would you like to play? Can I explain that to you? That's, that's the opening. So you need a mutual agreement with another person that they want to play with you. And this agreement about play that creates a dynamic between of you that you create a container. The container is started by the agreement and it's closed by the agreement. It's not the beginning of a new relationship. It's not the beginning of anything that one is assuming or guessing. It's just a game. That does not mean you have to play that forever. You play it when you choose to play it. And then everyone has the same time and space to ask these questions. So um, I have created some um, keynote slides and um, I want to give you some pictures. You want to see them? <laughs> yeah, okay. Is there any other question at this point? Is it transparent enough? Do you understand this, what I'm saying? As a man, or being in a man's body, I don't know if I'm a man, but I just feel sometimes like, well, I feel as a woman as well sometimes. Anyway, but being in a man's body um, and being in this place of asking somebody, okay, can you give me a massage? And then getting a massage and then me enjoying being touched. So let's say this, this the, 
the inflow, so the sensual inflow of my body is open. So I'm very sensitive and I'm so very fluid with my sensations. So when I'm getting touched, my body is, can get ecstatic and orgasmic pretty fast. And, you know, I can put a lead on that and I can shut myself down. But when I'm getting touched from somebody where I ask for a massage and my body goes into this dynamics and I, I can't shut myself down, then this person thinks I want to get more out of that than we actually have agreed upon. So I have learned when I ask somebody for a massage, okay, will you give me a massage? And I'm super sensitive. So when you touch me and when I feel you just doing something to get a response out of me, or you just do something to get me going, or you enjoy that really that you experience that I'm getting turned on or anything. Um, so I have to create a frame around that agreement. And when I know that's okay for them, and they say, no, I'm not doing anything, just enjoy yourself, totally great. Just, you know, I'm, I'm, this is not about sex, it's not about going anywhere else. And I, then I can relax in my body sensation. So my arousal can peak up and goes down and peak up and goes down and is a continuum of I feel myself. But if that's not okay, because I'm afraid of the person who is touching me is not comfortable with me getting turned on, then we, we have, we have a, a subtle conflict mm -hmm. and yep. that will come up in a massage. And I have that anytime when I go to a massage to, you know, stranger time massage, you know, I just have to explain 50 minutes. <laughs> just like, okay, so this is my body. My body has some needs <laughs> and, and please don't, you know, doesn't, doesn't make that clear when people putting their desire in the first place, but not um, taking responsibility that the other person has a limit and boundaries, then yes. you, will, you will perceive that as a limit pushing and that can feel pretty, um, yeah, as you explain that. One piece I would like to say about that, the three minute game and body work and massage. So the three minute game will not replace body work or massage. But what you will get is through the playing the three minute game that you have limits, you have boundaries and you need to respect them and you have to know when to put them up, when to put them first and when not. You know, the interesting thing is we think that when you are in the position of the dynamic of I do what I want and I ask you, may I do that? that I give my power to you in the moment that I either come from a place of power over and I use or misuse you, or I come from a place of love and care and give my power to you from a place, you know, altruistic, want the best for you. But the, the fact is that you on the other side, you are in the position of that power because you can either choose to reject the other person say just like now i don't trust you you're not you, you, i don't let you into my into my system or you say okay um there is a kind of a place that feels scary i we can just see that how far that goes and if i feel there is this is my limit and i have as well boundaries and if they're getting crossed if that kind of doesn't feel right i will say stop so what is more like the kind of pull dynamic where you're feeling towards it, or you have kind of just like, okay, I have to just like give my power to this person because this person um, uh, uh, says what, what they want and I put myself completely aside and I'm not respecting my limits. And then you would literally abandon yourself and your position of power. So you have this position of power and this position of power is that you have the responsibility for your limits and to keep them. And Harry Fetty said that as well, you know, if the person in, you know, the person who's doing the action for themselves from, if they come from a position of power or dominance and they're a shit dom so that they can't handle their power, you know, you know he says a shit dom <laughs> like this. You don't give your power to somebody else who is a, sh a shit dom. You don't do that. Nobody. Everybody who knows this dynamics of intimacy and surrender 
if somebody has not their shit together, I'm not giving my power to them. I laugh about them. So just like, just sorry, do your work. I'm not willing to give you my power. And not to please them and not to make them feel good. And yes, please. The idea behind that is of power, surrender, and intimacy. So the idea of power, giving you power, uh, or surrender to somebody else's power, is just only for one purpose, it's creating a deeper level of intimacy. And when I speak from my own, from my own desire, from my own roots, from my own core, and bring that back to the 12 step program to the second step when I just understand, not understanding cognitively, just from a neurological way. I want to surrender to somebody else's hand who knows what they do. I want to surrender my body to somebody else's gift of love and care that I don't have to think, I don't have to be in control. I don't have to kind of keep my guard or my limits up. I want to let go into their hands. That's a, that's a deep desire in myself. And I find many people coming to my sessions from that place of longing. And I have to be in full attunement with myself, with my own power when I give that. And I have to be in full attunement with this longing without creating an attachment. So it's a high level of attunement that needs to be in place. So the original of the three minute game is from Harry Fettis about power, surrender and intimacy. And uh, what you know as the wheel of consent or uh, what you know as the related to touch is an adapted version from Betty Martin. And my idea about somatic consent is a marriage, is a combination of the two because we need them to. So we, we need to know when we are in the position of power and we need to know when we are in a position of intimacy with a lover and with a, with a play body. So the three minute game um, comes, has two offers. The first offer is, um, what do you want to do to me? And this is adapted to touch. How do you want to touch me? So these are offers yeah so it's about what the other person wants within your limits so you give your gift and um of you give your gift of access for their action what they want to do translated that in the somatic consent engagement system is that it is for them and it is their action Hmm. Okay. So um, then the other person will ask the question, oh, can I do such and such for myself? Can I touch you? Can I feel you? Can I bite you? Can I lay on top of you? Can I, can I talk to you and you listen? So whatever the dynamics is, it has to come from the other place from a request. So they have to ask for permission. And then, yeah, you can within my limits, but oh, you cannot. So that this is, it needs this negotiation. So as an example, um, how do you want to touch me? How do you want to touch me for three minutes? So person A would ask, I, can I feel your back? Yes, but not lower than my waist. Okay, that's great. So then you have an agreement and you go for it. So the second offer is, what do you want to do? What do you want me to do to you? Or how do you want me to touch you? That's as well an offer. In this case, you give as well and within your limits, what are you willing to do? But in this case, it is your action. So you are the one who is doing something and it is for them. 
so that the other person, when you ask him, asking them that question, they have to come with the request, oh, can you do such and such for me? And then within your limits, yeah, I can do that. So example, how do you want me to touch you for three minutes? Um, can you massage my back firm and slow? Yeah, yes, I can do that. Okay, great. So you have an agreement. So this is literally the three minute game to play this two offers. So the important understanding is here that this has to happen alternating that everyone has the same time. So person A and person B, they playing it this way within the frames that when it's for you, you put your desire first, respect their limits. When it's for them, you put your desire aside and respect your limits. So when you have played this, and this is where it gets really, really interesting. When you have played that with a few hundred people, a few hundred times, you will go through an internal process of development. I promise you, there is no way that you will not having a development inside because when you play it related to the central inflow and you can feel yourself up and you have found your own way of, um, you know, your obstacles and what's difficult for you, you will go through a neurological emotional change. Your personality will just, you just see things different and you see it different in others and you can relate and respond from a different place. So the empowerment level is, or the development into empowerment is tremendous in there, the possibilities. So that when you know that you are in charge about your own desire and what you want, you can come from that place of knowing how to make a request and that's, can I, may I, do whatever I want to do. So this is where waking up the hands comes into place. So if you can ask that, you don't have to play the three minute game when you are with your beloved one. You can say, hey, can I just like lay next to you? Can I, can I hug you? Can I, can I feel you? Can I touch you? And just for the moment as it feels right for you, or, you know, I have created with my partners and with my ex-partners always this agreement, you know, do I have an infinite permission to touch you wherever, whenever I want, and you take care of your limits? Yes, you have that. Oh, great. I give you the same permission. You can touch me wherever, however you want. Um, uh, I hear you have permission. I take care of my limits so that we don't have to ask every five seconds if we have permission to feel each other. So that I can create this dynamic with whomever, wherever I want. And I know with whom I have a permission agreement about the action that is going to happen. And I know with whom not. And when I'm in connection with people and something's going on where I feel like, well, this is not really a sitting right here for me. I need to say that. It comes from my embodiment that I know, but not only cognitively, emotionally, sensually, somatically, in my body, my body knows. So in this case, I'll go back here, it's your action and it's for you. And you ask the question, can I first? And then you need from the other person the um, um, permission. Hey, can I feel your arm for three minutes? Yeah, please, but no pinching. Okay, great. So that the second question, the second request where I want other people around me going into an action for myself is, hey, can you give me a back massage? Hey, can you massage my feet? Can you tell me that, I don't know, whatever I want to hear. So I ask, so it's for me and it's their action for myself. And they are both requests. Yes, I can do that. Example, can you massage my feet? Yes, I can do this. 
great. Okay, that's the agreement. So that by playing the three minute game in this dynamic allows you to tune into your capacity of own your desire and taking responsibility for your limits when other people asking you when it's not the three minute game. All right. That's just a cognitive mental <laughs> dynamic. My idea for today was <clears throat> creating a kind of short um, picture of now practicing that with each other, but we have already five minutes before the end. So there's not enough time right now. <laughs> and what I wanna share here as well is that I created this consent lab and the consent lab is to practice that. So that's why I offer the consent lab that people can come from a vulnerable, intimate place and asking for what they want and taking care of the limits when they're getting asked and not interpreting somebody else's limit as a rejection and taking it personally. But that's nothing I can provide that happens in people. Any questions? If I ask my partner or my partner's asking me, hey, just can you please feel me? and their desire, their longing is totally appropriate. Yeah, they, they coming literally from that place already of the apex because literally they giving access, but they want something. And in this wanting is a deep desire home, but what they want or what you want or what I want or what everybody else want is I want to be wanted. I want to be wanted. And you cannot anybody else making wanting you. And you cannot fake wanting. We all want to be wanted. And that's part of our desire to surrender into oneness, unity. Or this is comes from a deep place of 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 um intimacy and unified conscious, the desire of merging into oneness, if you want to say so. All right, I invite you for a minute or two, just take something in your hands. Just to make connection with your inflow. Mm. So on everything that I've just shared on a mental level, so that, that that resonates somewhere in your body where it wants to land. And whatever resonates there with you is yours. And just come straight back to this raw foundational experience of the inflow you're in action and you feel yourself because from that place you can recreate this structure that you have just seen from within then it's not a mental concept then it is a logical felt sense that belongs to you. Don't believe a word I'm saying. It's all within yourself. And you can feel it here, right now, in your skin. And that's my own truth. And my Sincere desire is that you find that as yours. It has nothing to do with me. It's just your sensed self. Hmm. And wherever you are, 
I invite you to bring the hands to a stop or stay there and move as you like and bring your awareness back to the screen. And we we'll probably go a few minutes over and uh, would like to have a check out from where you are right now with your own experience. Just try to make it as, I don't know, five words. <laughs> Who would like to start? Something sharp and crisp. Few words in my own regard. There is end of January, a consent lab coming up. That's free for everyone. And there are only 25 places in there. So if you want to join, please register. If you want to have other join, please invite them. And as well to this course, Foundation of Somatic Consent, please um, invite other people to the online course so that they can work through their own kind of experience um, in the online course. And there's as well, as I said, that an affiliation program, if you share that with other people and they sign up with your affiliation link, you will get 30% of the revenue. So that's all an offer for you to share this work if that has some benefit for you to share it with others so that they have a benefit of it. Um, that's for it today. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very much and have a beautiful weekend. Bye. Thank you.